John Wernham passed away on February 9, 2007. He had entered his 100th year. His life and impact on teaching and practice of classical osteopathy in the United Kingdom was great indeed. From an early age, this iconic individual was profoundly dedicated to his friend and mentor, John Martin Littlejohn. Following Littlejohn's death in 1947, John Wernham embarked on a number of activities which reflected his desire to preserve osteopathic philosophy and principles in teaching and practice. He organized the Maidstone Osteopathic Clinic in 1949. With T.E. Hall, another influence on his professional life, he was a founding member of the Institute of Applied Technique in 1954. Today, this organization is known as the Institute of Classical Osteopathy. John Wernham remained unyielding in his commitment to traditional osteopathic thought, teaching, and practice as understood by him. The first meeting of him was like we came in late because there had been a snowstorm and the flight was delayed, and we were going into the class, and um, there was this really passionate uh, gentleman that was talking, and he had a very proper English accent, and I was immediately kind of taken in by the way that he spoke and the, the fervor with which he spoke. So that was my initial impression of Mr. Wernham. But uh, what I remember was especially the passion that he had about osteopathy. When he came to osteopathy, he was very passionate. I think he, we would ask a lot of questions during the treatment, and the feeling was that he was <laughs> almost tired of repeating the same thing a thousand times. But he would explain, he would explain what he was doing. He had patience for it. He was, he was always okay. You need to know about osteopathy, he was always okay. He traveled 200 miles to come and do a, a master class with us. And at that point, he was 95. Uh, he spent the whole day lecturing, demonstrating, answering questions. And never having met him before, I just knew him by reputation. And his reputation was for being bloody-minded and cantankerous. Um, and actually, I realised that quite a lot of what he did was a show. And that underneath, he was a really sweet guy. Um, I was really, really impressed by seeing what he did. And as I was the model for his demonstration, I thought I was fine when I went in. And then I realised that for two weeks after the treatment, just a single treatment, took about 20 minutes, um, my head cleared. I wasn't even aware that it wasn't clear. Um, it could be very dogmatic, but at 95, I think you've kind of earned that. So um, that was the beginnings of my interest in classical osteopathy. It took a good few years before I took it any further, but certainly that was the beginning. In having treatment from him, almost weekly for four years, five years, was an education in itself as well. And, how, and he rarely talked about what he actually felt in treatment. Only once I remember in class did we get him to talk when he picked up an arm and he said, I know everything there is to know about that patient when I pick up that arm. I know his life history, I know the vital force falling through him, I know everything about him. And part of the reason I think he didn't talk about it, he didn't want people to get sidetracked into that, that to keep them, learn the basics first before you get sidetracked into the deeper fault of palpation. Take a year, two years of educating your fingers before you start learning to read with them. And that takes time. Not only that once did he talk about that, but when he was treating you, you could feel it. And I remember once again, with the arm movement, just that simple, movement, he was doing that on me, and a question started to appear in my mind that I wanted to ask him. And he said, stop pulling. And as soon as I did, the question went. <laughs> he felt the question before I even had it formed and interfering with the treatment, um, which again was remarkable. Mr. Wernham treated me, and I remember he said something really interesting that stayed with me. He said, most patients fall into one of two categories. They're either hard to adjust, it's really hard to get the adjustment to stay, but once we get the adjustment, it stays. And then we get the other sort of patient who it's easy to adjust, 
but it's really hard. the adjustment doesn't hold and we have to keep readjusting to get that adjustment to hold and then he turned around and said and you you're really hard to get the adjustment and it doesn't hold I now understand a lot more about why that is but it was just so lovely to hear the way Mr. Mr. Wernham talked about that again the way he got that from his experience as a practitioner not from anything anyone else had said but what he felt in the patient. I was watching him because he was treating his children, this child, uh, and he treated him a few times and he was, he was really bad but he got really well, you know, got really well and I got so um, I was, um, emotional because I was thinking when my own children were the same age and he said to me after, and he said, uh, that sort of moved you, didn't it? And I said, yes. And he said, uh, aren't you allowed to treat children in Sweden? And I said, no, not under the age of eight. And he just looked at me and he says, lucky you, noisy little beggars. My most lasting memory of, of John Wernham was uh, having treated him for what seemed to be a congestive heart failure during a home visit. Um, a couple of days later, he'd come into, into the college and... Uh, much improved, obviously much improved, still rehabilitating. He sat down in the sunshine as he would do to uh, get his vitamin D dose. And uh, I said to him, in a you know, kind of surprised tone, you're looking a lot better, sir. And he looked up at me and he goes, don't sound so surprised, young man. Which says a lot about osteopathy, it says a lot about him, uh, and also you know, the, the, the nature of the treatment. That we should be optimistic about it and uh, he always was, he's always clear. Very often we're not going to know, you know how things work and how things progress but he always would you know, try, he would always say that uh, don't ask if it's a case for osteopathy, ask you know, what osteopathy can do for the case and what you can do for the patient. Unfortunately I was never able to be taught or be treated by John Wernham but one couldn't help but have great respect for uh, John Wernham of having kept alive and preserved uh, the writings of John Martin Littlejohn. After spending some time with him, talking with him and um, seeing him teach, I could see how he had really devoted his entire being to, to this work, to the work of osteopathy, in particular the work of uh, Mr. Littlejohn, trying to keep Littlejohn's teachings alive so that they wouldn't get lost kind of amongst uh, the passing of time in history and I think he's done a very good job of doing that. And he saved Little John for us. If it wasn't for him, Little, we, we wouldn't know anything about Little John. Um, the BSO didn't care about him. Um, the stuff that they had on him was never looked after. If he hadn't kept all that material, it wouldn't be there for us. Um, and to hear him talking about Little John as you see part of it in the video that I made of him. Again, was, you can see the care that he had and the feeling he had for the man, even though he missed a lot of his teaching through the war. He went off and, and came, when he came back, little John was either, uh, had passed away, so he missed a lot of that transition. And it's through him that we know little John, and that shouldn't be forgotten either. I had the chance to meet Mr. Wenon at the BSO on his last visit to the, to the school. My brother Diego organized the visit. He was the president of Manos. He was the first speaker of the year. And uh, I was in charge of, of being like the host of Mr. Wenon for the whole evening, since the moment that he came out of the car until he left. Let's say I was his holding partner to help him work. He couldn't work very well. And he gave a talk, it's probably the busiest I have ever seen at the BSO about what is osteopathy. And I didn't know anything about Mr. Wenon, so I didn't have any preconceived ideas about him. I knew that he was famous for his character, but that came back more into the 60s and 70s. When I met him, it was 2004, probably, it was 2004. He was already 97. But what I remember of him, he was a very nice man. He was quite happy to be back at the BSO because it had been many years since he was there. And, and the talk was impressive. I mean, talking, talking about osteopathy in a way that nobody spoke 
like that before in the school. Over the times, over the years, as time passed, I came to realize that he was right. The osteopathy, the way he knew, the way he learned from little John, because he was a BSO graduate. Obviously, John went on and studied at the BSO in little John times, back in the 1930s. And um, the school had moved a long way from those teachings, and he was right. We couldn't understand as students at the time, because we only knew one thing, what we were being taught at the time. But uh, after that, he became my osteopath. So I used to go down to Mainstone and have treatment from him. And that was probably a very good experience. For two years, I would be treated by him. And uh, what I remember the most from him was in terms of treatment, his touch, very, very soft, very soft. Treatments were very specific, were very nice. When I was at the BSO, uh, I ran uh, I was president of what we call the Manu Sinestra, uh, uh, an independent organization of students, and we used to bring osteopaths uh, to speak to, to the BSO students. And then um, the first guest we have, it was Mr. Bueno. He came and he did a talk about what is osteopathy. Uh, and I, always, uh, I will always remember that day, because I think that was the last day he came to the BSO. And it was a full class. We had like a hundred students uh, and teachers listening to him. I don't know if they understood everything he said, but uh, it was great. It was an, a, a nice uh, eye opening. And John Wernham did something remarkable. He came out to visit me, finally wanted to visit Israel where he'd been when he was in the army, in the British army in 1945 during the war. He was stationed in Palestine for a good year as a photographer. We had very fond memories of uh, Palestine and he was delighted to come out and see what had happened and the changes in the country and his wife had died a year or two earlier so he was now on his own basically and he flew out on his own, he was 82 or 81 and stayed with me, my wife was visiting relatives so she wasn't at home and he stayed in, in our apartment in Jerusalem and in my apartment, that is downstairs, I made a small clinic where I saw patients. Um, and it was our habit for years to treat each other weekly. I treated him, he treated me. Even if we had no particular problems, we'd treat each other for the, for the, the, uh, the professional skills that we were playing with, developing, and so on. So I said to John, you know, I hadn't seen him for about nine months or a year. I'd already left for Israel. And, he certainly hadn't received treatment from him. Would you like a treatment? He said, yes, of course. So he was the first on the table. I'm coming to the end of the treatment, and I decided I wanted to use a side-lying technique on his pelvis, one that he's familiar with, one that he's done on me many times, one that I've not enjoyed whatsoever. <laughs> and I thought I was pretty good. I'd completed it. And he still is his underpants, and he doesn't let me finish the treatment with whatever else I want to do. He says, he, he sits up suddenly, he says, let me show you how I can do that, how one can do that in a different way. So he gets me to undress, he's still in his underpants, so I'm in my underpants, he's in his underpants, I'm lying down, he puts me on my side, and he then does one of the most beautiful, delicate, lightest of side-lying techniques on the pelvis that I've ever seen or experienced. There was no thrust, a little tap perhaps at the end of the articulation. I'll show it to you in a few moments. The bugger, the bastard, had been working on that for years. He'd been <laughs> improving it for years and he hadn't shown me. <laughs> and I've never looked back since. I was really impressed about one day I was studying in, at the John Wernham College in Maidstone and you know the lecture room is just close to the practice room of John Wernham and he got to the toilet and getting there he passed through the door and the door was open you know and, and I just stopped myself to, to watching Mr. Wernham what he was doing because he was really absorbed by studying very carefully a book and I stayed there for one minute just watching and I was so impressed because uh, 
was really old at that time, it was around 98 years old, 95, 96, I don't remember very well. Anyway, very old. Then I decided to get to the toilet and once I got back, Mr. Wernan was not longer inside the room. And that's, I was so curious to get to, to watch which kind of book was he reading before. And on the desk there was, uh, on the, desk there was uh, the foundation, or um, maybe the um, fundamental of osteopathic technique. He wrote that book uh, 50 years before and he was still studying. And this uh, was a great example for me to understand how he was a perpetual student and how, how much I had still to, to cover as a topics to to, to develop my skill. He was no doubt an, an extraordinary man um, and me personally um, my thoughts coming up to 10 years since his death are, are ones of um, gratitude really because I think if I hadn't have picked up that book, if I hadn't have gone down to see him um, if I hadn't have spent all that time with him, I certainly wouldn't be in the position I am today. There's no way I would be. I wouldn't be um, as confident as I am in, in approaching my patients, but also still being able to continually study because you know, he would often say he, he's a student. Uh, he was a student. Um, you know, it doesn't end after your... Um, graduation, you got your piece of paper, it's, it's a lifelong passion really to um, try and understand the human organism. And he, yeah, he, because he knew that I could speak English, he was trying to say words that I didn't understand. And uh, so I found a word for him that he didn't know, uh, which I think is really good. Um, opsimat, which means someone who learns late in life. So I think that we are all osteopath opsimats or opsimat osteopaths. So he thought that was quite funny. I've never met somebody with such dedication and devotion to anything and such sort of focus. When uh, we spoke to him about the idea of uh, retiring, he, he couldn't understand the concept. Why would you want to do that? You know, when you so enjoy and, and what you're doing is so fulfilling. And, you know, ultimately he kept working until a fortnight before he died. And basically, you know, what led him to his, his demise at the end, if you like, was, uh, was working too hard. My osteopathic appreciation is the fact that, because I was young, I was only 22, 23, um, and I'd done my four years, and I was treating in a room right next door to his, and most patients, uh, when I first started, I'd uh, go around to, to his door, and he'd either be, you know, doing something on the typewriter or treating a patient. And I go knock on the door, I go, Mr. Wernham, could you come through and have a look at this patient for me? And he never said no. He'd always come through. He might berate me, he might berate the patient, um, but he would always be there for instruction of me as a student, you know, a graduate osteopath, but a, you know, obviously a student. And, um, you know, I really appreciated that. And um, I think this is the big problem now in osteopathy. People do their four years graduation and they need a mentor and they need mentorship. And that's what I like to think we've tried to achieve through the Institute. The fact that we've got the, the clinic up in Holloway in London. Um, you know, and I, I did want to instigate that mainly because uh, I wanted the opportunity of young graduate osteopaths to uh, have somebody to supervise, to ask questions, to, to help them because osteopathy is challenging, osteopathy is difficult and I think you need that mentorship and I was very lucky uh, for three years I, I had uh, John Wernham um, as a mentor. Um, a very important point to remember, Hall was Wernham's teacher. Hall was Wernham's teacher. When Wernham went to the BSO, Hall was already teaching at the BSO. And um, Hall disagreed with Wernham on a number of major points of technique and uh, <laughs> made it quite clear to Wernham, you know, he thinks he's wrong on this and that point. Uh, Wernham stood his ground, he, you know, he uh, 
wished, begged to disagree to. So, you know, they, it's not revelation from heaven. Uh, there's disagreement. Disagreements on some major technical points. In, in this case, it was in terms of neck technique and what was being done in the upper neck. Two things come to mind. One was once when I was treating him, and at the clearest time that I had of learning how to do the arm movements. He was lying on the table, and then I was doing the simple lifting the clavicle. And I have never been hit and slapped so much in about a minute than that time. He would hit me with one hand, say, no, wrong place, too much, too much pressure, not moving enough, and he kept on doing it, not hard, not violently in any way, until I reached the point where I had to just shut my mind off and let his body talk to me. So that I, that's how I learned how to do that movement. And it was an incredible experience. And I contrast that with when, he, when we used to work on his knee, and he had a bad knee, he was so terrified because it was really arthritic knee and the amount of broken off material inside it made it very difficult to work with and you were terrified of making it worse. That when I'm working on other people, it took me about 20 years to get over that terror that I went so tense working on other people's knees that it exhausted me in a bit. <laughs> but again, it was his way of teaching. He got you to do the work. So you've done the two years, it was two years we did a foundation course over two years because coming to Sweden backwards and forth. Um, so it was the last session before we were doing our exam and I was like you know, stressed and uh, I had a treatment of him and um, so I was just uh, lying on my back and he says just turn on your tummy darling and then I was lying there and you sort of, you know, you wouldn't say anything to him because you thought, well, okay, just lie there then. And he just went to the toilet. <laughs> Came back after a while and I think, okay, yeah, well, but it was probably what I needed, re relaxation before the exam, so to unstress my nerves. And he said some interesting things. I remember one time he was talking about stress and he said something, he said, yeah, you know, everybody gets stressed but in women it's deeper. And I think he really saw, literally from his experience treating patients, the way modern society, the way women multitask and things like that actually puts a very deep stress on them. And he was talking so much from his experience treating. And that was what was incredible about Mr. Wernham, was that everything he said came from what he'd actually felt with his hands. It wasn't an intellectual exercise, it was actually what he'd experienced. It's very difficult to know what to say about the man. He was such an influence on my life. He's taught me osteopathy, taught me everything I know about osteopathy, restored me to health. Um, I'm sure I would have been, if not dead at this stage, I'd have had an artificial hip, an artificial knee and cardiac surgery. My wife would definitely have been dead by now if he hadn't restored her to health. Me. He inspired me and still does in, inspire me in, in my osteopathy and, um, and for that I've, you know, I'm sort of eternally grateful. One couldn't help but in the presence of him having phenomenal respect uh, for him. Very gentleman, pure English gentleman really, very well educated. He will always thank you after a treatment, he would say thank you sir. I say no thanks to you, I say it was nice to be of service.